On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro is back with the surf report. We have a preview of the May issue of the Fisherman Magazine, and I have an interview from Mount Sinai Harbor, plus anglers like you reporting in from around the island, all here at the new Fisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Big week here at the Fisherman Magazine. Tuesday, May 4th is the start of the fluke season. There's a four fish bag limit and a 19 inch minimum length. Good luck and don't forget to check the back bays. Many of these fish have already been in the area, specifically in the South Shore Bays. The May issue of the magazine is out now and there are some great articles. Ever wonder how other successful anglers set their drags? Jerry Audit asked experienced anglers from around the Northeast for their insight. Scott Newhall has a great read on one of the best ambush feeders around, Fluke. Tony Salerno has the hot spot of the month, the green ones. I myself penned an article on Peconic Bay Porgies and weak fish sharpie Kurt Fay has tips on catching these tide runners. This and more in the current issue of the Fisherman magazine. News 12, meteorologist Rich Von Olin has the outlook for the weekend, Rich. All right, thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone, let's uh, check that weekend forecast, see what we got going on. Of course, you can always check your uh, favorite local sites, local apps to get your local weather as we get close to the weekend. This is just an overview, a heads up on what's happening for the first weekend of May. So water temps, uh, you know, 40s to near 50. I was in the back bay this week. A lot of mid-40s, a lot of cold water still in the channels and the ocean still. And wave heights are going to be pretty high. A lot of wind blowing on Saturday. It's going to be a gusty northwest breeze. So... Uh, early in the day, very bad, but then late in the afternoon, we start to settle down a little bit. I think uh, if, you know, late start on Saturday, you might be able to get that afternoon in. And then looking at Sunday, it gets okay in the morning, but then starts to lump up with that southwest breeze in the afternoon, going back to 48 pretty quickly. Northwest, you know, 1525 Saturday through about lunchtime, and then by the afternoon, if you do a late start in the ocean, you could probably get some hours out late in the day as things settle. And then we go light and variable overnight, and then right back to southwest, about 15 to 20, gust to 25 on Sunday afternoon. So both days looking a little lumpy in the ocean, not the best weekend. High tides, you got the afternoon for the north shore, about midday on the south shore. Temps uh, cool on Saturday, 50s to around 60 or so, will be 60s to near 70 as we go into the day on Sunday, a little milder. Check the Guru quickly. Again, you can always check your favorite sites. I like the Guru. A lot of wind here on Saturday, a lot of colors on there. That's a big northwest breeze, so again, just watch for that. Sunday, you know, that little window at night early, and then we start to go a little more southwest, about 15 back to 20. So, you know, either way, not the best uh, weekend wind-wise. Maybe things will change a bit, but it is the first weekend of May. Be safe, get out there, enjoy good fishing. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro with the Surf Report. Fred? Hey, thanks, Matt. Some really good news this week. The weak fish have arrived. Uh, some really good fishing on Tuesday in Shinnecock Canal. Uh, actually, throughout uh, the whole afternoon, throughout the whole running tide, uh, Captain John Paduano and Bob Antisi really did a beat down on them uh, mid mid afternoon on Tuesday. They were throwing bucktails and also uh, gulp minnows on leadheads. Uh, later that day, myself, uh, Ethan from Whitewater, and a couple of his buddies uh, were there. We did a real good job on them also. Um, I was throwing a half-ounce lead head with uh, a pink curly tail fish bite. Um, other guys were using uh, just an assortment of soft plastics, a lot of bass assassin type stuff, but uh, everybody was catching some fish. So uh, hopefully that holds up. It's a really good sign. Looks like we might be in for a good week fish season. They, they were really thick. Um, around the rest of the island, school stripe is still dominating the scene. And uh, uh, no, no bluefish run developed as of, as of yet, or at least we haven't heard. But as I noted last week, it could happen any day, any time. So keep your eyes and ears open. Um, Starting over at the west end of the island on the south shore, um, again, best bet if you're looking for better quality fish is that west end of the island, Raritan Bay shore and also Jamaica Bay. Uh, Joey from Bernie's, um, he's talking about bass into the teens inside the bay. Uh, he did an over 30 pounder caught uh, deep inside the bay near the Cross Bay bridge, bridges. Uh, that fish is on a bunker chunk, but most of the action has been at night on SP minnows, daughters, and swim sheds. And there's been some uh, dawn action also on topwater plugs. 
um, over at Captree, bait and tackle, Jay. Uh, he's also covering for Jones Beach bait and tackle. He's been fishing that uh, backside of Jones Beach, fishing around the bay bridges and the marshes along there, and doing well with schoolies on three quarter ounce lead heads, with four to five inch paddle tails, and also small bucktails. And he said the best action has been on the last of the in and the first of the out. Uh, Bob, uh, Bob's tackle, uh, salt waters, and cap tree, all pretty much filing the same report. Um, good numbers of school bass uh, throughout the state channel and in the bay, but they're also uh, picking away at the bass on the open beach at Moses and Demo. The ocean fishing has been mostly tins and bait like clams or worms, and in the bay, uh, soft plastic, swim sheds, and swimming plugs. And again, uh, the better bay fishing has been at night or at first light. Further east, uh, report from J and J and Dix. Uh, some bass on the outer beach at Smith Point on clams and metals. Uh, Smith Point Bridge shoreline and actually both shorelines all along the narrows there, like the Mastic Beach side and also the back side of Smith Point, uh, producing fish on poppers at daybreak, swimming plugs and soft plastics in the dark and watch for some weak fish to show up there, possibly uh, in the next few days or next week or so. Uh, South Fork, it's also uh, traditionally a early bluefish spot, so if the blues do get here, I expect you're going to see some in that area. Uh, out on the South Fork, um, East End Bait and Tackle, and the guys over at Whitewater, and also Canada Tight Lines. Uh, Aside from the weak fish we already mentioned, uh, there's been uh, quite a few bass in both Peconic and Shinnecock Bays, all the usual shore spots. Also the Bay Bridges from uh, Quogue uh, all the way out through Hampton Bays have been producing good bass action at night. I know our managing editor Matt, uh, he hit those a couple of nights and did very well this past week. And that's, again, uh, soft plastics and swimming plugs doing most of the nighttime damage. Also, uh, with the weeks in the canal, there's been some bass and uh, also some fluke showing. Remember, fluke season opens on uh, May 4th. That's Tuesday. Uh, <clears throat> out in Montauk, uh, Nick and Paul out there, they're saying not a lot of effort out there yet, um, but... There are school bass along the sand beaches, and they're being caught on bay bucktails and metals and uh, ditch planes, typical early season action there, with fish on bucktails and soft plastics also. Uh, nowhere any bluefish yet, um, and no big fish, uh, no bigger fish that they know of. Up on the north shore, again, the west end of the sound, uh, blaze over at Duffy's. Um, he was talking about uh, Hempstead Harbor, Little Neck Bay, and Manhasset Bay producing fish up into the slot size. And uh, uh, still a lot of schoolies also in there, and that's, uh, that's again, swimming plugs at night doing most of the damage, stuff like SP minnows. Uh, Cow Harbor bait and tackle, Mark uh, said almost all the harbors now have decent numbers of school bass, Cold Spring, Oyster Bay, Santa Port, Huntington and Northport, and also some fish uh, out along the Sound Beaches near the Nissaquad River. And wrapping it up with uh, Sue at Miller Place. Uh, still bass inside the harbor there, hasn't heard of any on the open beach yet, but those fish will move east. Um, but she did mention that uh, there are decent numbers of porgies being caught already on clams. And that's the wrap for the surf this week. Matt, back to you. Yesterday I was down at Mount Sinai Harbor and I had the opportunity to conduct a quick interview. Let's take a look. I'm here with Councilwoman Jane Bonner and we're at the beautiful Mount Sinai Harbor and just from first glance around here they did a ton of improvements to the fishing. Um, this place is known for a bluefish, snappers, fluke, flounder, porgies, blackfish. It's a whole array of species that you could target here and makes it even easier with uh, these improvements. Could you uh, explain some of these improvements that they did over here? I'm really happy that you're asking about it. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm not a fisher fisherwoman, so I didn't even know that there are that many species of fish down here in Mount Sinai Harbor. But um, now that you mentioned it, uh, we have dredged completely the inlet and uh, improved 
with the dredging, we have improved the water quality tremendously in this harbor. Um, the flushing of the back of the harbor, uh, the safety to the boaters where the current isn't so strong. We were very hopeful and optimistic that when the DEC um, amended the permit to dredge more, uh, and our Department of Envi Environmental Protection, they were both very, very confident that the dredging was going to improve the water quality tremendously and it would improve the health of the back of the harbor. Um, and a healthy harbor is better for all the species that live in the Long Island Sound. It's better for our water quality. You know, the Long Island Sound is an estuary. It's a national estuary of significance. And uh, billions of dollars have been spent to improve the water quality and when you see um, all the different type of species that have come back because the water quality has improved through the uh, all the efforts of multiple levels of government and on the local level the town of Brookhaven did its part by permitting the dredging the county did the dredge we rebuilt two new jetties we rebuilt this whole fishing pier and when you come down here you can really see from the back of the harbor to the end of the fishing pier and all the way out into the Long Island Sound, you can see that the water quality has improved. Um, so we're really proud. This is a really a big win-win for all the residents of Brookhaven and especially for people that fish like you guys. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim? Thanks, Matt. Well, greetings here from Montauk this week. Um, everything's really starting to come together and we're getting ready for a good season. Uh, we have bay anchovies showing up now. We have some squid up in the bay, uh, some really nice squid to be exact. There are some fish, uh, weak fish being caught in the Shinnecock Canal, and there's plenty of little striped bass in uh, the area around Montauk. So things are starting to come together. Most of the charter boats are getting their boats ready. Um, there's been a couple guys out black fishing, and everything's starting to come together. So like last year, there's going to be a lot of social distancing until things kind of get settled. I think midsummer maybe we'll see a little loosening of some restrictions. So make sure you uh, book ahead and uh, inquire with your uh, charter boat and party fleets. Um, like I mentioned last week, I put on a Montauk Kids Fluke Tournament. This is a fundraiser for the Tyler Project. This is a uh, project that was put together by a family for kids' mental health here on the East End. Last year we raised over $5,500 and it's a $25 entry fee for kids and it goes throughout the whole fluke season. Um, if you do fish in Montauk with your kids, it's a great opportunity. It is located here in Montauk, so the official weigh-in is Montauk Marine Basin. I've got good prizes from Hoagie Lures, Yeti Coolers, Grundon's Foul Weather Gear, and the winner gets a custom-made fluke rod. So get in touch with me via here or email me. I can get you an application if you fish in Montauk with your kids. Other than that, it's going to be a nice weekend, so uh, get your boat ready, get your rods ready, and get out fishing. Thanks, Matt. With our Flying Freshwater Report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, here we are towards the end of April, which is surprising me as we ha our weather has been so crazy. Today it's going to be 80 degrees. It was 45 on Monday. I mean, it was just crazy. I had a trip on Monday. We went to one of the local islands, uh, fished, a bunch of us fished. What we did learn is, and it was windy and cold. But we did find a, a lee on the island. That's one good thing about fishing an island. We did get some practice, but the water was cold. I didn't see any fish caught. Not in my group, none of the surf casters, nothing. But the water is still very cold. Now, I'm down at the local, one of my local parks by my house. I figured I'd come here and do a few casting, try it out, get some rust, knock the rust off my casting stroke. Using the gurgler I had two fish hit I didn't land them but it was good to see and I'm only down here for about 15 minutes but I will tell you the water is cold for this time of year I thought it'd be a little warmer but anyway as far as the freshwater scene goes parks all the streams all the lakes guys that have been going out I've been talking about how good the fishing has been the bluegills are now really picking up. The warm water fishery is taking off. Uh, it, like I said, this is a this is the transition period. April's kind of a tease, but we're having a you know, it's the beginning of the season, and I'm looking forward to it. Now, as far as uh, uh, I'm doing a Zoom class this Thursday tonight, 
and it's going to be on uh, introduction to freshwater fly fishing. Slightly different than saltwater. It's, if you're interested in it, go to my website, riverbayalfitus.com. Look for the meeting ID and come on and join me at 7 o'clock. Uh, to next week, tight lines, everybody. From Shinnecock, we're checking with Mike Dean. Mike. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Spring fishing's just getting better here in between Shinnecock and Mariches. Uh, have heard of a little bit of action off the beach to the west, close to Mariches Inlet, around the jetties, small bucktails dressed, you know, getting those, those very first couple of small 15 to 18 inch fish. Most of the action has been in the bays. Um, I've had better luck on outgoing. Uh, although they do seem to be around in more tides, it's a little more prevalent on outgoing, especially when outgoing first starts. Um, you know, water temperature still seems to be playing a role, even though it's it's coming along pretty good with that. Predominantly 15 to 18 inch fish, but occasionally 26 inch slot fish mixed in. Heard of a 32 inch fish uh, taken today, the very end of outgoing in uh, near Mariches Inlet on a 007 diamond jig. Uh, at night, darters, metal lips, most of, I haven't fished a ton at night. I've mostly been going at sunset and uh, white bass assassin, half ounce jig head, uh, some kettle, kettle Creek outfitters, paddle tails have all worked. A little bit of a surface bite here and there with the smaller fish. So uh, things are definitely coming together. Still a lot of bait around. There's spearing, there's bunker. A lot of them, you know, a lot of dead bunker from this bacteria, whatever's going on with them. But nice to see the fishing coming alive. Haven't heard of too much uh, in terms of wreck trips or flounder. Pretty much all about the bass. There are a couple of small bluefish around as well. So uh, once those gators come in, it'll be interesting. Um, just a reminder, June 4th, the Manhattan Cup, going out of Liberty Landing in Jersey City. ManhattanCup.com. Direct message me on my social media or leave a comment below. Uh, myself, Tim O'Rourke, Matt uh, are going to be there. Fisherman plays a big part in supporting this uh, tournament that's catch and release. And we get a, a number of post-combat vets out. Definitely get involved. It's a great day. Okay, get out there, have fun, catch them up. Back to you, Matt. Thanks. From Huntington Harbor, we have Captain Gage Simon. Thanks, Matt. It's great to be back with my first report since last year. This February, I decided to take up fly fishing so I can target my favorite saltwater species on the fly from my kayak this spring. With two months of fly fishing under my belt, I decided to introduce fly fishing to my eight-year-old son, Ethan, and my six-year-old daughter, Leah. They both love fishing for snappers, schoolies, and fluke, and now love catching brookies and rainbows on the fly. While these two were getting good at wading, stripping, and landing these trout, I was getting good at filming the trout underwater. The three of us have been back multiple times to fish the Kinequat River, landing tons of brookies and rainbows with fish to 22 inches. Tomorrow morning, I'll be launching my kayak on the western north shore where the water temp is warming up and the schoolies and the bass to 35 inches are invading our back bays. Hopefully in next week's report, I'm showing you some nice sized bass caught on the fly. Until then, wishing everybody bent rods, tight lines, and I'll see you out on the water. From Oceanside, we have Captain Joey Leggio. Hey Matt, what's going on brother? Report out of the Debs Inlet area. Uh, with all this wind lately, I've been fishing the bay, getting uh, lots of blackfish in the bay actually. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you could always tuck in and stuff. And uh, one of the things guys with the bay fishing, don't overlook any of that structure you see. You see any rock piles going into the water in the bay, pylons, the whole entire dock line straight down to the Atlantic Beach Bridge, that whole area, the school. You know, look for any type of structure over there. Definitely don't overlook it. Get in there, jigs, crabs. You could tuck in on those windy days. It's very easy just to get in there <clears throat> and put a catch together, you know. The other night I went out and wanted to get some dinner. Ran out, had five fish real quick. Left the dock at 4 p.m. at night. Jumped on some of the structure and I uh, had two keepers. So that was nice, had a nice little dinner out of it. So that's what I've been doing when I can get out. Uh, spoke to Nikki on a no time. He's been still making that run to the west, still getting his limits of bass. He's been hitting the reefs. He's been catching the blackfish on the reefs too. Uh, there's also been some nice codfish coming off of the reef. Um, that's basically it for my area. So uh, the bass, yet a couple people that have trolled really haven't caught anything on the uh, in front out of Debs on a troll. Again, everybody's still making that run to the west. But uh, that's my report for Debs, and I'll talk to you soon. Back to you, Matt. Raul Ortiz, the urban angler, worked his spot on Staten Island to no avail. 
He then hit one of the regular piers he fishes and is lock and load on fresh bunker. All the fish were just shy of keepers. He also let me know that his fishing network from Battery Park in Lower Manhattan was producing bass up to 30 pounds. If you'd like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting for around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or avid angler, contact my producer at labayrat at gmail.com. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, to be a subscriber to the Fishman Magazine to be part of the Dreamboat Contest and Coastal Kayak Clash. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and the index for our specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. See you right here next week at theallnewfisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.